Hey Rayleigh and anybody else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. Deuteronomy 5, 6, and 7 is where we are today. And we have had quite the summary. Again, we're looking at Moses's letter or his discussion uh, with the Israelites about, hey, these are the things I want you to remember as you go into the promised land. And there's been a litany of things. So we looked at the summary, the summa, summarization, Ayo, summarization of the Israelites' journey. So where did they camp? Where did they go? What did they see? So Moses recounted all that for them. He uh, takes a closer look at the rebellion from God and the great pride of the Israelites. But we see themes of both that pride, the rebellion, the judgment that God gives them, and then finally a plea to remain faithful, and then also a warning saying, hey, this is what happens or what will happen if and when you don't remain faithful. So we saw that as well. In 5, 6, and 7 today, we're going to see again another summation of the Ten Commandments, the honoring and loving God theme of, hey, what should that look like? Who do we honor um, and what, what shape should that take? And then more on the driving out of the nations as well, again in 5, 6, and 7. So, chapter 5. Moses summoned all Israel and said, Hear, O Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our fathers that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire of the mountain. At that time I stood between the Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord, because you were afraid of the fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no other work. You shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your maidservant or manservant or maidservant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals nor the alien who lives within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that, it, so that you may live long, and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbor's house or land, his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire, the cloud, and the deep darkness. And he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on the two stone tablets and gave them to me. When you heard the voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leading men of your tribes and your elders came to me, and you said, The Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty, and we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a man can live, even if God speaks with him. But now why should we die? This great fire will consume us, and we will die if we hear the voice of our God any longer. For what mortal man has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the fire as we have and survived? Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. The Lord heard you when you spoke to me, and the Lord said to me, I have heard what this people said to you. Everything that they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commandments always, so that it might go well with them and their children forever. Go, tell them to return to their tents, but you stay here with me so that I may give you all the commands, decrees, and laws that you are teaching them to follow in the land that I am giving you to possess. So, 
Be careful to do what the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not turn aside to the right or to the left. Walk in all the way that the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land you will possess. Chapter 6. These are the commands, decrees, and laws that the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord your God, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you, a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of goods you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Then, when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Fear the Lord your God, serve him only, and take your oaths in his name. Do not follow other gods, the gods of the peoples around you. For the Lord your God, who is among you, is a jealous God, and his anger will burn against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the land. Do not test the Lord your God as you did at Massa. Be sure to keep, keep the commands of the Lord your God and the stipulations and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and is good in the Lord's sight, so that it may go well with you, and you may go in and take over the good land that the Lord has promised on oath to your forefathers, thrusting out all your enemies before you, as the Lord said. In the future, when your son asks you, what is the meaning of the stipulations, decrees, and laws the Lord our God has commanded you? Tell him, we were slaves of Pharaoh in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Before our eyes, the Lord sent miraculous signs and wonders, great and terrible upon Egypt and Pharaoh and his whole household. But he brought us out of there to bring us to bring us in and give us the land that he promised on oath to our forefathers. The Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and be kept alive as is the case today. And if we are careful to obey all his law before the Lord our God as he has commanded us, that will be our righteousness. Chapter 7. When the Lord your God brings you into the land you are entering to possess and drives out before you many nations, the Hittites, Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Parasites, Hivites, and Jebusites, seven nations larger and stronger than you, and when the Lord your God has delivered them over to you and you have defeated them, then you must destroy them totally. Make no treaty with them and show them no mercy. Do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons, for they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you and, you will, and will quickly destroy you. This is what you are to do to them. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones, cut down their Asherah poles, and burn their idols in the fire. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of this earth to be his people, his treasured possession. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all the peoples. But it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your forefathers that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know, therefore, that the Lord your God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant and love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commands. But... Those who hate him, he will repay to their face by destruction. He will not be slow to repay to their face those who hate them, hate him. Therefore, take care to follow the commands, decrees, and laws I give you today. If you pay attention to these laws and are careful to follow them, then, then the Lord your God will keep his covenant of love with you as he swore to your forefathers. He will love you and bless you and increase your numbers. He will bless the fruit of your womb, the crops of your land, your grain, new wine, and oil the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks in the land that he swore to your forefathers to give you. 
You will be blessed more than any other people. None of your men or women will be childless, nor any of your livestock without young. The Lord will keep you free from every disease. He will not inflict on you the horrible diseases you knew in Egypt, but he will also inflict on them, inflict them on all who hate you. You must destroy all the peoples the Lord your God gives over to you. Do not look on them with pity and do not serve their gods, for that will be a snare to you. You may say to yourselves, these nations are stronger than we. How can we drive them out? But do not be afraid of them. Remember well what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all Egypt. You saw with your own eyes the great trials, the miraculous signs and wonders, the mighty hand and outstretched arm with which the Lord your God brought you out. The Lord your God will do the same to all the people you now fear. Moreover, the Lord your God will send the hornet among them until there are no survivors who hide from you have perished. Do not be terrified by them, for the Lord your God who is among you is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you, little by little. You will not be allowed to eliminate them all at once, or the wild animals will multiply around you. But the Lord your God will deliver them over to you, throwing them into great confusion until they are destroyed. He will give their kings into your hand, and you will wipe out their names from under heaven. No one will be able to stand up against you. You will destroy them. The images of their gods you are to burn in the fire. Do not covet the silver or gold on them, and do not take it for yourselves, or you will be ensnared by it, for it is a detestable thing to the Lord your God. Do not bring a detestable thing into your house, or you, like it, will be set apart for destruction. Utterly abhor and detest it, for it is set apart for destruction. I think it's so interesting when people read that and they take great offense at God's chosen people bringing judgment. The world takes great offense anytime that God speaks of bringing his holy and righteous judgment against them if they're not turning from their ways. I think that's really interesting to see in this chapter too, and God lays it out exactly why. God says, do not do this or this will occur. And unfortunately, a lot of the time, that's exactly what the Israelites do. And heck, even in our own lives, that's what we do, the thing that God is warned against. So why are we surprised when God tells us exactly what's going to happen? If it's, excuse me, if it's punishment or judgment and that exact thing happens, that should not surprise us at all. I mean, obviously this kind of ties into the topic of the Ten Commandments there and looking at God's law and everything that he wrote on those stone tablets. And so that question kind of comes up, is that, is the Ten Commandments something that we live by? Is that still important today? Is it necessary? And I would say that it's necessary to a point. It's so important to recognize what God's, God's law is and the interpretation of it, what it was. Because the interpretation of that, if you met all of God's law, you were living a holy and righteous life. But then once Jesus came down and communicated what that law really meant, really all we see is that law acts as the perfect guidepost to something that we can never meet up. It just shows us how far we have fallen. And Jesus says, hey, he comes along and essentially says, if you think that's bad, you're not supposed to take your neighbor's wife. I tell you that anyone that looks at a woman lustfully has committed adultery. So Jesus ramps it up infinitely further. And we recognize that we have no hope without Jesus as a savior. So we see that that higher standard. Um, so again, the law shows us our fallenness, and then Jesus shows us that redemption. So that's my prayer for you, Rayleigh, is that you remember the Ten Commandments, that you look at them and see, hey, this is the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law is something that is so much greater. And by that, we see that we are so much more fallen. And it's important to recognize, it really is important to recognize how far fallen we are and how in need of a savior we are. Or we won't get past our own pride to recognize our infinite need for Jesus, who is the perfect new covenant, who is the perfect new uh, life that we have in him. Anyway, know that I'm praying for you and that I love you. Anyone else, as always, know that I appreciate you so much. And I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.